I'm back working on the repair of this MDS power supply. If you saw the previous video in this series then you'll know that I had a failure of the 5 volt rail. Kind of a strange failure, these modules are supposed to have over voltage protection uh, but the output voltage was rising up to over 10 volts and this is a 30 amp rail so uh, it's quite capable of doing a lot of damage to the electronics which is why I test the supplies before I fit them to the MDS units. And uh, I took the module out so we have at least two faults it appears. One is why the over voltage protection isn't working and the second is why it's over volting in the first place. Should be 5 volts out, uh, maximum 30 amps so anything above that and the over voltage or over current protection should cut in and it wasn't doing that. Uh, when I dismantled this and these are a real pain to get apart because you have to desolder all the power transistors before you can get this board off. But when I took it off I found there was a break in the track and this particular track connects the uh, power output rail to the voltage protection circuit which is why the voltage protection wasn't working. So what I've done is I've replaced the power transistors on the module. So if you're interested there's a 2N3055 which is the driver for the other three and those three are 2N3771s. So high power output uh, devices and I had uh, all three fail but in different ways. So I've got uh, those bolted in place. Uh, before we reassemble this I thought we'd have a quick look at the failed transistors. So these are the three that I took out and by way of comparison I got a brand new one. So if we get the multimeter I've got it set to diode test mode and we should see, these are MPN transistors so we should see them as two uh, diodes. So if we connect to the base pin which is this one and we should then see between that pin and the body one diode and between that pin and the other pin another diode. And if we reverse the leads then obviously it should read as open. So we know that's uh, a working unit. If we do the same thing with the first transistor that I took out, this should be open. You can see we've got a short between the base and the collector. And if I reverse the test leads, then open circuit to the emitter, uh, but again the same short to the collector. The next one, so between the base and the collector is open base and emitter is open and the base now reverse the leads the base to collector is open and the base to emitter is open so this is completely open circuit and the final one between the base and the collector is a dead short base and emitter is open reverse the test leads base to collector again dead short and base to emitter is open so uh, this is uh, this has got a, a direct uh, short between the base and the collector and I suspect that's what took out the track on the PCB. Okay so those three have failed, all three had failed but in different ways and what I'll do now is get the main unit reassembled. So as I said these were a pain to uh, work on. I've got uh, the board hopefully repaired I've um, replaced all the transistors, tested the rest of the parts on this board and they seem fine. Uh, what I have to do now is guide the board back down onto the uh, transistors so that the bolts all line up and then carefully ease it down and hope that all the leads are in the right place. I've got them as straight as I can so in theory if I push this board down the leads should all come through the holes. which they have indeed done. So I can see all the leads protruding through the holes. I'll get the uh, bolts refitted and not refitted. I can't refit all of them because some need to have uh, wires bolted to them as this is put back in place. So they're a real pain to work on. But I need to put some on here just to get the bolt, uh, just to get the board pulled all the way down before I solder the pins back onto the transistors. So I'll get this bolted back in place, I'll get it reattached to the main unit and it actually goes in this way around 
and once I've got the wires reattached this slides underneath and I can then start to reassemble the top part of the chassis. Uh, I won't show the reassembly of this, it'll be fairly tedious and you won't be able to see much anyway because most of it's done through the opening in the side of the unit. Um, but once I've got this back um, partly in place I'll get back on camera and we can look at the final stage of reassembly. Okay, I've got the module reassembled. I've reassembled the chassis, realigned the rear plate, and uh, what I can do now is uh, power it up and see if it works. So I'll spin it around and we'll get it connected to the power supply and see what happens. Okay, I've got it uh, plugged into the bench supply. Uh, before I can power it up, I need to fool it into thinking it's got a uh, a main switch attached. These connect to a, uh, a wiring loom when they're in the MDS unit that goes to a main switch and uh, light uh, and it connects through this but I need to fool it into thinking that's actually connected otherwise it, uh, it won't come to life. So I just need to put a couple of shorting links on here and this is just really uh, taking the place of the main switch. Uh, I don't have the fan fitted, um, I'm not going to run it up to full power in this test, I just want to see if the 5 volt rail comes to life. So I've got the test meter and I need to connect the test lead. So that just plugs onto there. Okay, goes out of the way. And so I'm going to power it up, I've got the Variac turn right down at the moment and I'll gradually increase the voltage, keep an eye on the current. And uh, we need to make sure that um, we don't have any dead shorts and that the 5 volt rail comes up to a steady value, somewhere around 5 volts uh, and then stops rising. Let's bring the transformer forward so you can see the voltage. Okay, so we'll power it up. And I'll start to slowly increase the voltage that's been applied. And we should see something start to appear on the meter fairly soon. It's starting to rise. And what happened before is it just kept going up and um, it got over 10 volts and wasn't regulating. So we're up to 3 volts with 100 volts going in. So it's now up to 4.75 and it's staying at 4.75. And the current from the mains is 0.1 amps, 0.2 amps, which is normal. Okay, so it seems to be regulating. It's a bit on the low side, but it does have, uh, of course, a new set of transistors in, so it's not surprising that's changed a little bit. Okay, so I need to adjust this. It um, is a bit on the low side. So there is a pot down here, you can't see it's on the camera, it's just by the side of this uh, main connector. And I should now be able to adjust the uh, voltage on the 5 volt rail. It's normally set to just over 5 volts, so I'll start bringing that up and it is responding, which is good. And I'll bring it up to just over 5 volts. Okay. So that appears to be working, so the repair seems to have been a success. And what I'll do now is go through, test all the other uh, supply rails, make sure they're all fine. Uh, and then I can finish reassembling this and give it a full power test overnight. <laughs>